problem. I'm sorry, to tell my parents. Pardon me? Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're looking at disturbing facts about the Menendez brothers. Every family has a secret. Um, it just depends on how bad that secret really is. Murder and the Movies. On August 20th, 1989, Lyle and Eric Menendez murdered their parents, Jose and Kitty, at their mansion in Beverly Hills. Although the brothers eventually confessed to this act of parricide, they initially tried to stage it as a mob hit. I think one of the Beverly Hills detectives described it as one of the most brutal crime scene he had ever seen. After disposing of the shotguns, they purchased movie tickets, headed home, and called the police. Lyle and Eric claimed they were at the Taste of LA Film Festival, where they watched Batman since the line for License to Kill was too long. Both parents were shot multiple times, with Kitty practically unrecognizable. The authorities had little trouble believing organized crime was responsible for this gruesome scene. At the time, the home video industry was known for having ties to the mob. But suspicions shifted to the sons as they spent roughly $700,000 on property, extravagant vacations, and other luxuries. They acted like they had won the lottery. O.J. Simpson Connections Four years prior to joining O.J. Simpson's dream team, Robert Shapiro played a small yet significant role in the Menendez case. On March 8, 1990, Lyle was arrested while Eric was at a tennis tournament in Israel. Eric Menendez, who was out of the country at the time, surrendered to police days later. Shapiro arranged Eric's surrender upon returning to California three days later. Shapiro represented Eric at the brothers' first arraignment before Leslie Abramson replaced him. The brothers previously met O.J. Simpson in the 70s, around the same time their father helped arrange the football star's Hertz car rental endorsement. Nobody does it better than Hertz. Nobody does it better. After his arrest in 1994, Simpson was placed in a cell next to Eric's. Believing he was guilty, Lyle suggested Simpson take the plea deal. Of course, Simpson was acquitted, which Eric felt hurt the brothers' subsequent retrial. Because his verdict was so shocking, there was a sense of extreme injustice that happened. And now we're going to have to write it with every defendant that comes up. Mark Jackson's basketball card. Simpson isn't the only former athlete with an unlikely link to the Menendez brothers. While NBA point guard Mark Jackson's connection is less direct, it's still eerie to think about. On Jackson's 1989-90 trading card, Lyle and Eric can be spotted watching the Knicks game from the front row. Check it out. This is a Mark Jackson card, right? And then you go for the Knicks, you push into the background. Those are the real Menendez brothers. Despite the press surrounding the Menendezes, this card didn't gain national attention until decades later when crime novelist Steven Zarantz noticed that the brothers purchased courtside tickets during their spending spree. Zarantz struggled to find photographic evidence until he stumbled upon Jackson's card. He shared his discovery on social media, and it wasn't long until the image went viral. And there they are front row seats, which were obviously very expensive at the time, and now it's just a little piece of history. Internet sleuths deduced that the photo must have been taken after the murders, but before the arrests. At first I just thought, oh wow, you know, it's you know, a little emotional, and I went, well, one of the last times that Eric and I, you know, a picture of us for together. The brothers committed burglary before the murders. While the Menendez brothers are notorious for a particular crime, this wasn't their first run-in with the law. They just got bored with life and they wanted excitement, they wanted challenges. Lyle and Eric reportedly committed, quote, hot prowls, breaking into other people's homes. For Lyle, this was a gateway to burglary with Eric following. Taking money and jewelry from homes in Calabasas and Hidden Hills, the brothers bagged over $100,000 in stolen goods. Joe, when he found out, that the children had been arrested, the main message was, how stupid of you to get caught. You're like sheep that follow. Among the property taken was a van, which they got pulled over in. Their father did damage control, apologizing to the households and writing checks for the stolen items. And Jose kind of said, let's distance ourselves from the Calabasas crowd. The brothers avoided any serious charges, but the Menendez family moved away from their ransacked neighbors to a new home in Beverly Hills. What seemed like a fresh start was the beginning of the end. Eric Menendez's screenplay. Before the murders occurred, Eric Menendez wrote a 66-page script entitled Friends. No, it wasn't about six 20-somethings living in New York. According to Craig Signorelli, a high school classmate who wrote the screenplay with Eric, the story centered on a, quote, sophisticated, good-looking teenager named Hamilton Cromwell. 
in the opening scene, Cromwell murders his parents with the intent of inheriting their fortune. We needed the characters to get money somehow and thought, well, here's an interesting way to do it. And it showed the Darwinistic tendencies of the, of the child toward the parents. Although it wasn't entered as evidence when the case went to trial, many recognize the parallels between the script and the murders. He's already got the idea and he's already beginning to execute in his mind the crime that he will eventually commit, murdering his parents for money, for the insurance money. What remains debatable is whether the Menendez brothers' motivation coincided with Hamilton Cromwell's. That's how the prosecution saw it. In any case, the script never got produced, but the Menendez case has inspired numerous Hollywood productions. I thought that it was probably pretty unreal, a bit of nonsense. I didn't contemplate that he was really planning to do such a thing. Confession to Psychologist. Growing increasingly suspicious of the brothers, the cops convinced Craig Signorelli to wear a wire, but he couldn't get a confession from Eric. Although Menendez didn't confide in his friend, he did open up to Jerome Ozeal, his psychologist. Eric came in and he was, uh, he was extremely agitated and extremely uh, depressed, and he began um, talking with me about the fact that his parents had been murdered. Ozeal didn't alert the authorities, but he shared this revelation with his mistress, Judalon Smith, believing anyone close to him might be in danger. After Smith told the police, Ozeal broke up with her. Meanwhile, the brothers were taken into custody, a confession tape emerging as a smoking gun. Not many Hollywood murder mysteries ever took a more dramatic turn than police are describing in a couple of savage Beverly Hills killings. Ozeal claimed he withheld this information out of fear for his life and his family's well-being. Um, he was uh, very fearful that, uh, that I would uh, tip the police or tip the newspapers. He didn't believe that there was any way for him to be safe now that I had this information. In 1997, Ozeal lost his psychology license, accused of breaking doctor-patient confidentiality and having relations with female patients married behind bars. On July 2, 1996, the same day the brothers were sentenced to life in prison, Lyle tied the knot with Anna Erickson, a salon receptionist and retired model who wrote to him during his incarceration. The marriage ended in 2001 after Erickson learned that Lyle was having an affair with a pen pal. Two years later, Lyle married Rebecca Sneed, who he had known for nearly a decade. Eric got hitched as well, marrying Tammy Ruth Sackerman in 1999. He started a hospice program. He's well-liked by uh, fellow prisoners. Sackerman discussed their relationship in her book, They Said We'd Never Make It. Although conjugal visits aren't allowed, the brothers remain married to their respective spouses to this day. A kiss when you come in, a kiss when you leave, you can hold hands and um, it, it, it is, that part of it is very difficult and people don't understand. While some might call this romantic, others can't help but find it at least a little creepy. The alleged motivation. The prosecution asserted that the brothers murdered their parents for the inheritance and life insurance money after their father threatened to cut them out of his will. They were buying Rolex watches. They were buying real estate. According to Lyle and Eric, the murders were not motivated by money, testifying that their father had been abusing them in more ways than one since their youth. Their mother also allegedly participated. Fearing their lives were in danger, the brothers acted first. One of their lawyers, Cliff Gardner, says the new evidence corroborates those claims and lessens their culpability. Some family members believe there was a history of abuse. Others say otherwise. I never saw anything in the home, never. Either way, proving self-defense was easier said than done. After a mistrial, the brothers were tried again, resulting in a guilty verdict and life sentences. The outcome divided the public. Decades later, people still debate their motivations and whether abuse justifies murder. Our society has just become more knowledgeable about trauma. Another potential victim. New evidence has recently surfaced enforcing the allegation that the brothers suffered at the hands of their father. This includes a letter Eric wrote to his cousin Andy Cano in December 1988. The letter is significant. Why? Well, the state's position was that Andy was a liar. Andy was making it up. Supposedly, Eric and Lyle were not the only ones who Jose Enrique Menendez subjected to abuse. Roy Rusello, a former member of the Puerto Rican boy band Menudo, claims that he crossed paths with Jose Menendez when he was working for RCA Records. After drinking a glass of wine at Jose Menendez's house, 
Ruseo says that he lost control of his body and was taken advantage of. I met Roy, and he talked to me about it. It was a difficult conversation for him. It was difficult for me to hear. This allegedly happened in the 80s, although Ruseo wouldn't speak publicly about it until 2023. Ruseo's accusations have further fueled the campaign to reopen the Menendez case. It can take years for people to recognize what happened, to have the courage to come forward. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 22 years apart. Although initially tried separately, Lyle and Eric Menendez were tried together for their second trial. After their sentencing in July 1996, the brothers could still see one another across the prison yard. September 1996 would mark their last face-to-face -face interaction for more than two decades. Important to you to stay together when you get moved to the state prison? Very important. That is what's gotten us through these six years and through our life. The two were sent to separate maximum security prisons 500 miles away from each other. The brothers were allowed to communicate through letters and snail mail, but not over the phone. They wouldn't see each other again until 2018, when Lyle was transferred to Eric's housing unit. On Wednesday, Eric Menendez was transferred to his brother's section in a California state prison. Sharing an emotional embrace, the brothers believed the impossible had finally happened. And the first thing that turns up quite an emotional moment. While Lyle called the moment, quote, remarkable, it also served as a chilling reminder of the time lost. Do you have any other interesting facts about the Menendez brothers? Share them in the comments. But some of the idea also came from two of the prison's most infamous inmates, the Menendez brothers. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.